as much as the kind of the fitness part, the overnight part is, I think is as much of a challenge. I remember checkpoint seven being a particularly horrible checkpoint. Um, we'd get to a brow of the hill and you would think you were pretty much at the, uh, at the next checkpoint. And as soon as you got there, you could see the red lights in, in the distance. You'd get up there and before you get to the summit and then you realize, hold on, I've got to go back down to the valley and walk around. And that happened a number of times on the approach to checkpoint seven. It was, that, was, that was horrible because at that point in time, you could, def you could see it in, the, in the other team, some of the other team members that they were kind of beginning to flag a little bit and it was going to get tough from here on in. The team was starting to obviously have some problems um, as they arrived at checkpoint seven. Um, that is probably the, it's the kind of two thirds of the way through the walk. It's about three o'clock in the morning. I think it's, so, but it's like three or four o'clock in the morning. Um, they've been walking overnight for a number of hours by now. Um, it's the highest point of the challenge. It's probably the windiest um, it's getting it is sort of a stretch around Devil's Dyke um, so I think for both support crew and team it's probably one of the most unpleasant parts of it. Um, people are going to fatigue at different levels as well we can't all synchronize our fatigue and go, and go yeah we're definitely going to fatigue at the next you know sort of checkpoint so it's important to be to be prepared I think throughout the whole duration. I think a lot of the people you say you're doing this challenge to think that you're kind of doing it in some sort of relay or or maybe you get up one day and you do 10 miles and you do something the next day. It's literally consecutive walking. We just got to the uh, Devil's Dyke, which is checkpoint seven. And um, it's quite a tough, tough way up to Devil's Dyke. And it's, it's very hilly and there's a lot of wind time. And um, Judy for about the past three and a bit hours has just been feeling rough. She, she hasn't been able to take any food or water stomach ache and uh, she's getting really really cold and um, James has been um, limping he's done, he's done his knee or something and um, we got to the seventh stop and just everyone was uh, just pretty wasted basically and kind of falling asleep at the table and took Judy to the uh, first day tent and uh, basically she's just got exhaustion she's pushed her body as far as it's going to go and it's, it's not going to go any further um, and I mean, James didn't go the first day, but he's visibly not, he's not going to be doing anything more either. Um, it kind of feels like we are on the home stretch now, I think, don't you, don't you agree, Mike? Yeah. Um, now the sun's come up, um, we're making kind of headway towards, towards Brighton Racecourse. We've got about three more checkpoints to, to go through. Is that right, three more? Um, eight, nine, ten, and then yeah, three, three more uh, before we get to Brighton Racecourse. We're hoping to make it in about 28 hours now. It's quite, that's quite a nice. Uh, see the sea out. Oh yeah. I think James had done a very, very brave thing to step in with only a week's notice. Um, it, he never had any time to train for it, so he was. I think he was. He was being asked a tall order. It has been nearly 30 hours since Team 317 departed from Queen Elizabeth Country Park. It is now Sunday the 16th of July and temperatures are at 28 degrees centigrade. Trail walkers stumble across the finishing line in their droves. Most are in some physical pain, but it is insignificant next to the elation of completing the world's toughest team challenge. We're really nervous Very now. Justified in feeling. <laughs> <from now. laughs> it's the most painful thing I've ever done, never doing it again, but I'm glad to have done it. Well, it's a fantastic experience. It was much harder than we expected. We thought we might do it in 24 hours and we took just under 30. 
um, but it's been great. There have been some really fantastic moments. Oh, it's brilliant now it's finished, but I can't find my feet. Excellent, really. It was a, a really good walk, but it was very tough, a lot tougher than we thought it would be. I want to have a breakdown. That was the hardest thing ever. I'm never going to do anything like that again. Never in my life. I think we do something here. I think we get a medal now. It was exhausting. It was really challenging, but uh, all for a worthy cause. Well done. How many finished? Just two. Still a great achievement. Oh, I was uh, full of beans. Had plenty of uh, Red Bull and all sorts of stuff in my system, so quickly wore out, though. I feel pretty, pretty rough right now. I mean, we are, on behalf of all of us at Oxfam, the Gurkha Welfare Trust and Queen's Gurkha Signals, for all your fundraising efforts and your efforts over the last day and a bit, thank you ever so much, and that will go to help alleviate suffering both in Nepal and the rest of the world. So thank you very much. Please wear these medals with pride. You've worked extremely hard to earn them. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. Congratulations and Arthur. Thank you very much. Well done. Enjoy the moment. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, guys. <laughs> there are obviously loads of uh, great causes around in the UK to support, uh, but when people are sponsoring people that do the Trail Walker event, what they can be sure of is that their money uh, goes to support Oxfam's work. So if they've got a remote interest or a concern for the kind of abject poverty we sometimes see on our TV screens, and they want to do their bit uh, to try and help Oxfam uh, around the world uh, to, uh, to tackle some of that kind of terrible poverty that we see uh, perhaps week in, week out, then they can be sure that when they're sponsoring a Trail Walker uh, team, then that money is going to Oxfam.